This is Piers Morgan Live. Welcome to our viewers in the United States and around the world tonight. Who's got the upper hand, Vladimir Putin or President Obama? I'll ask New York Times columnist Nick Kristof and the co-hosts of Crossfire, Essie Cup and Van Jones. Also, a man who never holds back, Donald Trump, tells me what he thinks the president should do about Syria. Not to mention his thoughts on Mr Putin and America's first tattooed beauty queen. Has that crossed its own red line? Plus, the return of the wickedly funny Ricky Gervais. What he thinks of the idea of guns for the blind. It's a difficult one, but the short answer is because they can't see what they're shooting. <laughs> and his message for America. Dear America, please let Piers buy a Kinder Egg. <laughs> but, but don't let him buy a gun. <laughs> I want to begin, though, with our big story. President Obama and Vladimir Putin locked in a tug-of-war over Syria. Senior administration officials say they don't believe Russia would agree to any UN resolution that includes authorization for possible military force against Syria. President Obama, of course, wants to keep that option of military strikes on the table. Today, he said this. Ultimately, uh, what's needed uh, for the underlying conflict is a political settlement uh, that uh, allows ordinary Syrians uh, to get back to their homes, uh, to rebuild, uh, and to relieve the enormous suffering that's taking place. The New York Times' Nick Kristof is here. I want to get his view on this. But we begin with Donald Trump. He's fired up about Vladimir Putin and President Obama. He says his country's never looked so weak. And Donald Trump joins me now on the phone. Donald, you're angry about this. Tell me why. No, I'm not angry. I'm disappointed. We have a president that's not... No, I'm not angry. I'm disappointed. We have a president that's not looking very good. He's being outplayed by, you know, Putin to an extent that nobody's ever seen. And it's look, making us look very bad as a country. And certainly he's looking very bad. In terms of the leadership element here, because that's an area in which you're an, an expert, what is he doing wrong? Because it seems to me that he's been zigzagging all over the place and not really sticking to a firm game plan. And that, that's never strong leadership. Well, it all began when he used the term red line. He's going to draw a line in the sand, essentially, and don't cross it. They crossed it, and he didn't do anything. And then it became very late, and he decides to go back to Congress, and Congress is having fits over it, and it looked like he wasn't going to even come close to getting the vote. And he started looking very, very ineffective. And then, of course, the letter or the editorial that Putin wrote in the New York Times was amazing. It was just amazing. He said so much, and he said it in a very nice way, but it wasn't really nice at all. It was tough, about as tough as you're going to get. And Obama's having a very, very hard time competing. I mean, you know, when I read that Putin thing, it had a kind of Trump feel to it. It was a brilliant stunt. It created huge noise and maximum damage to his rivals whilst actually appearing to be smiling and charming. Well, the letter was very well crafted because I, I'm a great believer in crafting things. And this was about as well crafted as you can imagine. Now, I don't know that he wrote it, but certainly it was his thoughts and covered so much territory. And as an example, American exceptionalism. Uh, Obama likes to use that term. Some others like to use that term. And, you know, you think of the term as being fine, but all of a sudden you say, well, what if you're in Germany or what if you're in Japan or what if you're in any one of a hundred different countries? You're not going to like that term. And it's very insulting. And Putin really put it to him on that. But then he talked about why are we exceptional? Why would we be? We just went through put it to him on that. But then he talked about why are we exceptional? Why would we be? We just went through a disaster in Iraq where we spent $1.5 trillion, where we lost thousands of our people's lives and lots of other lives, by the way. And what did we get? Nothing. In fact, if it's going to be taken over by Iran. Or, of course, a lot of things can happen in the meantime. But as it is right now, Iran is already controlling it. They're flying over it to go to Syria. Uh, they've been given permission to fly, not that they needed the permission, because Iraq has basically been wiped out. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's been it's a very sad thing. But the letter was amazing in that it covered so much territory, covered it with respect and with a smile. And it was about as tough as you could do. What would you do, uh, Donald, with Syria and indeed with the wider issue of America's place on the world stage and in the Middle East in particular? Well, first of all, you know, in the old days, we had generals like Patton and Robert E. Lee, and we had some great ones, General Douglas MacArthur and Grant. 
uh, if they must be just spinning in their graves when they see what happened. Because, you know, if you're going to fight, you fight. And if you're going to do something, you do. The element of surprise has turned out to be one of the great jokes of all time. Here we are having our generals talking about exactly what they're going to be doing, where we're going to be hitting them, uh, when we're going to be hitting. It's not going to be a hard hit. It's going to be a very soft hit. We don't want to change the regime. It's the most incredible thing I've ever witnessed, as opposed to just either doing it or not doing it. Now, I don't think it should be done anyway. I think that this country, our country, has tremendous problems that we have to solve, and we cannot be the policemen of the world. These are not people that like us in any way, shape, or form. And you have others out there, not that we're back in, away from Russia and China and others, but we have problems in this country that we have to solve before we start helping people that hate us. We have no idea who the rebels are. Absolutely no idea. We think they're probably perhaps as bad as Assad, maybe worse Assad, maybe worse. And so we should be attending, really tending to our own business and straightening out the United States. Final point, uh, a complete segue here from one red line to another. But a red line was crossed in the world of beauty pageants. Uh, in Miss America, we had Teresa Vale, who has, sports a very large tattoo. Uh, would you ever allow such a thing in your pageants? Well, you allow, but we don't encourage it. I, I'm not a fan of tattoos. I see many people get the tattoos, and I don't know what's going on nowadays, but just everybody's getting tattoos. Many of them regret it later on. <laughs> many of them are do, you know, done by people that aren't even artists. They have no talent. They have less talent than I would have in putting on a tattoo. <laughs> And I see these people with tic-tac-toe boards on their, on their arms and legs. And I don't understand what's going on with the tattoos. I would certainly not want it. I would not want anybody that I'm close to to have it. Uh, if it's done, it's done. But it's a pretty tough thing, and it's, a, it's, it's an amazing trend. I look at some of the NBA players, and I say, what the hell are they doing to themselves? <laughs> Donald Trump, it's always good to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much.